LA and they stole full of diamonds and gold. The whites united and decided to create South Africa as a democratic state, but soon they denied blacks voting rights. So the whole government was controlled by whites. The House and the Senate and all of the courts were white, so the black people got no support. And plus the police would arrest and beat any peaceful protesters in the street. They divided everybody into four different races and moved them by force into separate places. So if you were Indian, black, or brown, you had no business in the white town. They had segregation of transportation, buses, bus stops, trains and train stations, separate ambulance, different doctor and nurse, and the black hospitals were always worse. Restaurants, hotels, and the public parks might be off limits. If your skin was dark, it was a crime, and you could get more than a fine if you crossed the line of that whites only sign. They had separate teachers at different schools, black and white beaches and swimming pools, cafes and movie theaters wouldn't let folks in, discriminating if they had the wrong color skin. No mixed marriage, it was a criminal act for a white person to have relations with a black. Apartheid went from the womb till the tomb, couldn't even take a dump in the same bathroom. So people say Israel's an apartheid state, but I can't relate to that baseless hate. It's not really fair to try and compare a racist regime with the war on terror. Using common sense against violence, Israel had to build up the border fence. And if you think that's apartheid, it's because you don't know what apartheid really was. In Israel, apartheid is not the case, because regardless of gender, religion, and race, all Israeli citizens, black, brown, and white, have equal social and political rights. So the Arab Israeli population, which makes up 20% of the nation, might be a minority, but at least they can vote, unlike the rest of the Middle East. Look at the whole region. You see, only Israel is truly a democracy, where every citizen's right to vote is protected, and Arab officials often get elected. That's an important point. Let me stress it. There's a dozen Arabs with seats in the Knesset, plus an Arab judge on the Supreme Court so they don't fall short on government support. And everyone has access to the same schools, the same beaches, and the same swimming pools, the same resorts and hotel guest rooms, same public parks and public restrooms, the same cinemas, restaurants, cafes, same trains, buses, taxis, and highways, same doctors and nurses, all deliveries of babies are done in the same facilities. Arab Israeli life expectancy is great up by 27 years since 1948 and their infant mortality rates have declined from 32 per thousand to less than nine and they're doing much better economically relative to every other Arab country. There's no restriction on choice of career. They can join the military if they volunteer. They work and reside wherever they please from a lot all the way to the Sea of Galilee. They live in the very same cities as Jews on the same street in the same house if they choose. So people say Israel's an apartheid state, but I can't relate to that baseless hate. It's not really fair to try and compare a racist regime with the war on terror. Using common sense against violence, Israel had to build up the border fence. And if you think that's apartheid, it's because you don't know what apartheid really was. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. My name's Dolly Lice. I'm going to be back. I'm going to do two more things.